It's time once again for the Sports Couch on AreaSports.net. I'm Randy Olson. The Sports Couch is made possible by People's National Bank, serving your financial needs across Southern Illinois, member FDIC. And by Carter Turf and Tractor, your local Kubota dealer in Fairfield. And by Wayne White Propane and Sporting Goods, also located in Fairfield. Well, in week number six of the high school football season, the Fairfield Mules cruised to a victory over CZR by a score of 80-30. to 30. It was a, uh, one of those games that kind of turned into a JV contest as uh, the most points scored all season by Christopher and the most points scored by the Mules. And in fact, uh, Fairfield was able to have 10 different guys carry the football in that game, which is kind of indicative of, of how it went. But uh, it was kind of a JV contest as we turn into uh, Coach Justin Towns with the Mules right now. Congratulations on the win, Coach. Now 5-1 and one on the season. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, it was kind of a kind of a crazy night at the train yard. Uh, you know, we jumped out pretty quickly, 22 nothing in the first quarter. Um, you know, Christopher kind of essentially aban- abandoned the running game and just started throwing it. And um, we're able to... You know, they were able to get in the end zone a few times. Actually, it was, um, I think, a uh, two-touchdown game with about a minute and a half to go uh, in the second quarter. And we scored right before the half, uh, made it 44-22. So that was kind of maybe the nail in the coffin a little bit. I think Christopher had a little bit of momentum. Um, you know, give, give their kids credit. They... You know, they got a lot of the good receivers back from last year, but, of course, they don't have their quarterback, um, Zaveda, who's been injured. But this um, other kid that they had playing did a nice job. And really, um, you know, the Coach Hargrove flat out told me, he said that's the best he's played all year. And um, Yeah, you're talking, you know, they, about, they you're talking about Trey Cole. Yeah, Trey Cole. He um... Yeah, I mean, um, you know, and he had a good night. Now, you know, at the same time, we were able to pick him off four times. So, you know, I thought our defense, you know, once we made some adjustments in the second half, uh, did a really nice job. They didn't score late. They didn't score until literally, um, I think, a minute or so to go in the fourth quarter um, on our backup. So I thought our defense did a great job in the second half. And, you know, I just thought offensively it was one of those nights where, um, you know, everything was clicking offensively in the run game. Um, we mixed in some pass, and I just thought that our kids did a great job and really responded. And, and um, you know, one of those games that, you know, offensively you gain a lot of confidence, and, um, you know, defensively you, you see some things, once again, maybe that you need to work on. And, and, and I'm okay with that uh, because we have time to work on it, and we're, we're going to continue to get better. And, you know, we're still playing through injuries. We, you know, we got a lot of guys out there that are that are playing that are not near 100%, but they're still pushing through and, and trying to get their, you know, senior year in. And, um, you know, so we're hoping over these next couple of weeks, you know, obviously, um, you know, Hamilton County, I think, is going to be a formidable opponent. But, you know, we're hoping we can get healthy come playoff time. Well, you only punted one time in the football game against Christopher, and the Bearcats only punted one time in the football game. So it was a lot of offense by both teams. Yes. Uh, you know, both teams were able to move the football. I, I think we had over uh, 500 yards total offense. Uh, I think they had uh, just under 300. Um, but like I said, it, it's one of those things you're, you're, you're excited about your offensive output, but you're a little disappointed. And, and wish maybe a little bit been able to play a little bit better defense, um, but as I said, we're we're going to learn from it and we're we're going to continue to get better. Well, I mentioned that you had ten different guys carry the football uh, in the rushing game, and you had a total of nine different mule score touchdowns in the game. So it was a lot of good experience for some of the younger guys, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean we had we, we you know with what we do offensively, we're going to have a lot of guys carry the football. Um, you know, I, I think. Every game we've had, you know, even even tight ball games, we've had five or six different guys carry the football. And that's that's just what we do offensively. We try to run a lot of guys in and out of there, and um, you know, we try to keep them out on de- keep them out on the field on defense and rotate them in on offense. And um, you know, I thought Camden Robbins is finally maybe getting back a little bit healthy and, and playing with a lot of confidence with this, you know, shoulder injury from early in the season he had a huge game um you know and we got uh you know Noah Barger continued to 
to do a great job and hit big plays for us. And, uh, you know, we were able to get McGuire Taylor back out there, uh, get a few carries for us, even threw a few passes for us on some halfback option passes. Yeah, how about the pass so, to Rodgers uh, for the touchdown? That was a wild one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was a heck of a catch. That was right before the half. That was kind of a – we had set that one up earlier. We had we had thrown one uh, from Camden on a, a halfback option pass, and then we went ahead and threw it back to our quarterback, Rodgers. And, uh, you know, he's, he's a great athlete and – heck of a catch and like I said I, I thought it was a really big play before the half because if we don't score there uh you know Christopher gets the ball in the third quarter and they're only down a couple of touchdowns you know and they maybe feel like they have a chance to get back in the game but I, I really felt like that was just uh, really took the wind out of their sails and really they didn't never really recovered from that yeah you mentioned uh, Robbins he uh, ended up uh carrying the ball 13 times for 153 yards. So, yeah, a real real big game for him. Well, let's look ahead now to the Hamilton County Foxes. You go on the road down there for a Saturday afternoon matinee game on Saturday. Um, you know, they've got a couple of wins this year, and they're a team that can throw the ball as well as run the ball. So you've got to be ready for everything, don't you? Yeah, and that's, you know, that's the thing I've, I've kind of watched with them. You know, I've seen them line up in a double tight, you know, similar to what Carmi did, and Carmi had a little success you know against us and I've seen them throw the football you know and and obviously uh some teams have done a little bit of that and you know I think kind of like you know what we try to do we always try to take something away um whether you want to you want to throw the ball up and down the field but you're not going to run the football or vice versa you know we may give you the, the short passing around but, you know, we're not going to give up anything deep, and we're, we're going to take away your run. So, um, you know, we're, we're still figuring out that game plan. Um, you know, I, Hamilton County is always, always a physical team, um, and I, I, I kind of see that no different this year. They have some big physical kids up front. Yeah, they got one kid that weighs 320 pounds, yeah. Yeah, you know, and, you know, that's what I, I – I, I watched film on them, and I thought their two tackles reminded uh, me kind of our tackles last year with uh, Kreider and A.J. Gonzalez, just two big, big kids. Um, so, you know, we we got to be ready. They're a hungry team. They're, you know, they're, they're two and four, so they're, they're still in the playoff hunt, definitely. And, you know, so we're going to have to be focused. We're going to have to be locked in. And, you know, we, we started preparation for them already, and, I do like the fact that it's a Saturday game. It gives us an extra day to recover. Uh, gives us maybe uh, a little bit of a kind of a play playoff routine for your week and for your travel. And I think anytime you can do that and put your kids in that type of situation and and mentally, physically prepare them for something like that, that's that's a bonus as well. Well, I'm going to ask you to put on your athletic director's hat right now. You know, every school and every team is is approaching the situation with Vienna differently. Some people are taking the bye, and some people are scheduling other games. Flora has announced that they're going to uh, play Shelbyville uh, this weekend instead of of taking that um, that forfeit win with Vienna. Uh, the jury's kind of still out, I guess, on what you're going to do on week nine with Vienna. Is that true? Well, I mean, it's 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 kind of like. Uh the wild, wild west of scheduling because I, I was, you know, I've been in talks with a school or two, and then, if, I mean, if you don't, if you don't initially jump on something, they're not there to get anymore. And, I mean, that's just, that's how it's happened. And mm-hmm. You can't blame other schools. I mean, some of the schools that we've, we talked to have been three hours away, and if something opens up a little bit closer, you, quite frankly, you can't, you can't blame them. And, um, you know, not that anything's been signed or anything like that, but we are scheduled to host a home game. We have officials. Um, we are really banged up, but I'm also really leaning towards the fact that I, I think we probably need to play. You know, I, I just I don't really like taking games away from kids. You just you just never know, and um, you know, it's it's about putting your guys in a good situation that's going to prepare them for the playoffs and and. You know the other the other big factor here, and you know it's I, you know our we may go eight and one, but our our playoff point total is going to be very low. Right. If we if we take that forfeit, you know it's just because some teams have picked up games, some haven't. So um, 
you know, I don't know. You know, you pick up in a game and you lose it. Well, you're seven and two, or you pick up a game and you win. You're eight and one. But I don't know that you know there's much difference between a seven and two team that you know took a game and and lost to a quality opponent but picked up those playoff points, or an eight and one team that took the forfeit and and you're still eight and one but you don't have a lot of playoff points. Right. I don't know that it's going to be much seed wise difference. Whereas if you, you know, you can find a game maybe and, and you can pick up some points here and there, maybe it helps you seed-wise, mm-hmm. you know. So um, we're actively looking, I guess, to answer your question. I mean, yeah. um, but, you know, we're, we're also going to be smart about things. Sure, and, oh, yeah. Uh, we've, we've, had a, we've had a rash of injuries this season like we haven't had. And, and a lot of it's ankles and and things like that that, you know, an extra week or here, here or there, could make a huge difference for us. And so, you know, we're gonna we're gonna see. I you know, I'm gonna be honest, I'd like to kinda know where all this is headed by the end of this week or at the very very minimum early next week, you know. Um mm-hmm. so obviously we're looking, you know, we got Hamilton oh. County on Saturday, we got Edwards County. Um, obviously, Edwards County's down a little bit this year, um, so you know we feel like you know week eight is an opportunity too for us to continue to get you know get healthy and get ready to go. But um, you know I think you're seeing more and more. I think I saw yesterday maybe Argenta uh, canceled their season or is looking at canceling their season. Uh, in the past week or two, there's been a few other schools that have done that, so. I do think there's going to be opportunity, but it's a matter of uh, getting somebody to come down south and and play. You know, right. I think that's a big factor. And then you really, you really probably don't want to play on a Saturday. You know, it's, it's mm-hmm. going into the playoffs. You know, your very few teams play on that Saturday. Although it's becoming more and more common just because you can't find officials. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, that would be a factor to me too. We we much rather play on a Friday night. But, right. you know, we'll see what happens, and and we'll just go from there. All right. Appreciate you sharing your insight with us. And, again, congratulations on the win against Christopher, and best of luck as you prepare for Hamilton County this Saturday. Okay, Coach? Thanks. I appreciate it. Thank appreciate you. it. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye. Well, that's going to wrap up another edition of the Sports Couch. We appreciate Coach Justin Townsend of the Mules being with us today on the show. The Sports Couch is made possible by People's National Bank, serving all your financial and banking needs across Southern Illinois, member FDIC. And by Carter Turf and Tractor, your local Kubota dealer in Fairfield. And by Wayne White Propane and Sporting Goods, also located in Fairfield. The Sports Couch is a special presentation of areasports.net.